Hello, my name is Sahil Preek. I'm pleased to be here at the Veith Symposium uh, with my friend and colleague, Dr. Brian D. Robertis, who's a professor of vascular surgery at University of California at Los Angeles. Um, we're here to talk about below the knee innovations. And specifically, uh, Brian, um, I, I think at this year's V Symposium, there's been a lot of excitement about below the knee interventions. What's got you excited about the future of below the knee? What, what technologies are, are really uh, first uh, front of mind? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of excitement uh, because of the number of devices we have. There's, there's a, just to name a few, lithotripsy, drug-coated balloons, uh, uh, permanent implants with drug illusion. So there's a lot of exciting stuff going on. Um, one of the more interesting things, of course, is, is the, the prospect of bioresorbable te technology that will be uh, helpful in terms of providing structural support, um, but also will uh, have drug elution combined with that, and maybe not have some of the downsides of uh, some of our permanent implants. So I think that's an, a very exciting uh, uh, topic that's coming around, and there's been a lot of buzz about that. Right. So uh, with the paclitaxel scare of this year, let's say, um, there's been a lot of discussion about whether or not drug elution is valuable, and even if it's going to work in the baloney segment, we've had a drug-coated balloon that wasn't FDA approved this year, uh, somewhat to the surprise of many. Um, what do you think about that? Is drug elution the answer for below knee, or do we need mechanical debulking or scaffolding, as you say? What, what do you think are the technologies that are really going to win in that space? Sure. <clears throat> I think the, uh, the drug elution uh, issue, especially as it pertains to paclitaxel, is complicated. Uh, I'm not sure that all of us believe there's a true mortality risk there, but we can't, we can't ignore this data and this concern, and so we've been very cautious about that. When we look at uh, drug elution below the knee, uh, certainly there's, uh, there's restenosis that occurs in any vascular bed, so I do think drug elution is always going to be part of our best therapies going forward. But, you know, if you think about the, the, uh, the patency rates of tibial interventions, um, unlike the SFA where a lot of our, our occlusions or restenosis comes at 18 months, 12 months, you know, very, very far down the road, uh, tr true, true window for restenosis, there are many of our patients with tibial disease in which we see reocclusions or restenosis at, at three months or two months, you know, and, and that's not the time course for restenosis, and that implies that acute recoil or, um, or other mechanical factors in, in the residual plaque are part of the problem, and so, so that's why the, the combination therapy of a, a scaffold or structural support plus, plus drug elution is probably the right, the right uh, um, you know, magic bullet, so to speak, to, right. to help achieve long-term patency in these, or at least it, it's, it's very promising as an option. And so and to that end, there's a couple of things that are exciting in the space. So the Saval trial is ongoing now, uh, and it's, it's under enrollment. How do you think the paclitaxel scare is going to affect um, an alluvial-like device below the knee? Do you think it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt it? Do you think it's going to help to have a new technology? What's going to happen, do you think? Yeah, I, I think it'll be interesting to see the results of that trial. Um, I, I would not be surprised if it uh, does, uh, it, it meets its primary endpoint. Of course, we'll have to wait and see. But um, I, 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 um, I think, that, again, the combination of scaffold and anti recentness therapy makes sense. Um, the, um, you know, the, the problem is that for all of us to be 100% cons uh, um, assured that there's no paclitaxel uh, safety related issue, the, the size of these clinical trials uh, the, the, to, to really definitively prove without a shadow of a doubt that there's no, uh, there's, there's nothing behind this signal, the, the size of the trials that would be required are, are probably not, not, um, uh, you know, not something we'll ever see. Yeah. So I think that's always going to be, that specter will always be hanging over us. Right. Um, uh, that said, I think there's just growing evidence at every one of these meetings that paclitaxel is, is likely continues to be safe and, and, um, and it's, it's a very reasonable thing to use in our, in our high-risk patients. Um, that said, uh, it's, it certainly gives us reason to continue uh, pushing beyond and looking for the, the next technology that may have uh, a, a multitude of advantages over our current drugs and our current devices. Both you and I are involved in, in, a, stu in a study that's about to get started called Life B BTK or Below the Knee. Uh, with the bioresorbable scaffold, uh, which is an Everolimus eluding uh, bioresorbable. Tell me about that. What's your, you know, your excitement about it? I know we've seen some data that you presented here at Veith uh, regarding uh, Ramon Varco's ex uh, experience uh, in Australia with five-year data with the right. prior generation. Uh, tell us about the data and, and, and what got you, what's getting you excited about it. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that uh, probably the, the, the top two uh, uh, studies or, or piece of data looking at the use of, uh, of previously available bioresorbable scaffolds are, of course, Ramon Barcos and Stephen Coombs. Um, and then all of us, or many of us, have also uh, uh, used these devices as, as well for in various, various uh, circumstances with various patients, depending on the clinical scenario. 
Um, and I think that the, the, the overwhelming message we've, we've uh, received from the published or from the presented data is that the patency rates are among best in class. You know, so uh, up till now, there have been a number of relatively small randomized trials looking at DES versus bare metal or DES versus PTA in the tibial circulation. And without question, all of these trials have shown a superiority for the combination of scaffold and drug. All right, well, it's great to chat with you. I want to thank everybody uh, for your time, and uh, we're delighted to be here from the V Symposium in New York. See you next time.